Hello everyone, welcome to the last video on our ENT series. Uh, now we are going to discuss sore throat, which is another very important topic. So I listed the five important differentials of sore throat here that needs to be excluded during the history taking. Those include tonsillitis, upper respiratory tract infection or flu, laryngeal carcinoma, vocal abuse and glandular fever. As you can already tell, laryngeal carcinoma is going to be the red flag here, which you can't forget to rule out in history taking. So whenever the patient present to you with sore throat, the first question that you need to ask is obviously the open-ended question that can you please tell me a bit more about it. After that, you will start with your close-ended questions that include, first of all, Socrates, that is site of the pain, onset, whether gradual or sudden, character of the pain, that is can you please describe this pain for me, radiation, um, radiation means that you will ask the patient, does the pain go anywhere? Is it relieved by anything? Is it aggravated by anything? And what is the severity of the pain? The last S stands for severity of the pain. You will ask the patient, can you please describe uh, this pain for me on a scale of 1 to 10, where 1 being no pain and 10 being the worst pain that you have ever experienced? I tell you in every video, but Socrates is really very important. You cannot, you cannot, you know, have hazardly ask Socrates going in between Socrates and the DD questions because it will affect your uh, consultation. Like there is, if you look at the PLAB2 marking scheme, there are marks for consultation. So consultation basically means that how structured your history taking and management is. So if you are going back and forth between Socrates and the DD question and the ideas, concerns and expectation, and then you jump into the management and then in between management, you are asking questions. It means that you are really haphazard and not organized. So it's not only going to affect your consultation score, but also if you are not organized and haphazard, you are going to forget things and you are going to lose marks in almost every aspect of your um, you know, your station. So please be careful and be organized. So you need to ask Socrates and then the DD questions in that order almost religiously, okay? All right, so after Socrates, you will ask about uh, if there is anything else, which is basically an open-ended question. If the patient says like what, or if the patient doesn't tell you, then you need to start with close-ended questions, okay? So you need to ask, do you have any fever? If he says yes, then you need to elaborate the fever as well. Since when have you been having fever? Um, and um, have you measured it? How much is the fever? Have you taken anything for it, etc.? Then if there is difficulty swallowing, then you need to also elaborate a bit on that. So if these two points are positive, then it will point out to our tonsillitis that the patient is having tonsillitis. If the patient has fever, and he has a little bit of cough, runny nose, and sneezing, then it means he's having upper respiratory tract infection, which is basically flu along with laryngitis, which is a very common condition and mostly viral. Then you need to ask uh, if there has been any procedure done on the throat recently, any instrumentation, which will uh, rule out trauma to the throat. Excessive use of wise vocal abuse, especially in professions like teacher, speaker, etc., singer. So you need to ask about recent excessive use of voice. And then laryngeal carcinoma, which is basically the red flag. So you need to ask about weight loss, hoarseness of the voice, and if the symptoms are worsening with time and not getting better, then this points out towards laryngeal carcinoma. Then you need to ask about past medical history and past history of the sore throat and then past medical history. Then you need to ask about meftosa, so medication and allergies. No need to ask about family history of sore throat. And um, psychosocial, you can ask. And then lifestyle question. So lifestyle question, basically smoking is important here because if he has sore throat, then you need to ask him to stop smoking for a while because it is going to exacerbate, only exacerbate the sore throat. So in every station, kindly tailor meftosa and kephedix according to the station. You don't need to ask each and every question in each and every station, okay? All right, then you need to ask any ideas the patient might be having about their symptom, any concerns, any particular expectations from the team today, and then you are going to jump into the management. So for sore throat, you only need to admit the patient if he is having breathing difficulty, okay? Or swallowing difficulty, or if there is clinical dehydration, Basically, all of these are, uh, you know, they point toward peritonsillar abscess, which is tonsillitis, uh, which is which has resulted in, you know, pus accumulation around the tonsil, which is a very severe condition. The patient can't really eat anything, and it also leads to uh, breathing difficulty. 
So it's a very serious condition and you need to admit. And if there are signs of marked systemic illness that the patient is really unstable, very high grade fever, dehydrated, you know, um, not able to eat anything, drink anything, low BP, et cetera. So you need to admit, okay? If no such symptoms, then you need to just, if these symptoms, then you need to inform your seniors. If no such symptoms, then you are just going to, um, you know, recommend some systematic, uh, sorry, symptomatic treatment. So general advice, like drink plenty of fluid, do gargles with warm water, prescribe pain painkiller like paracetamol and advise the patient to take lots of rest. Um, then specific treatment is antibiotic, but you cannot, you know, offer antibiotic to each and every patient. There is a specific criteria for offering antibiotic and it is called center criteria. So Central criteria, even though the name looks a bit intimidating, it's really an easy criteria. So if there is fever more than 38 degrees centigrade, if there is exudate on the tonsil that, that is during examination, you can see pus on the tonsil and there is um, cervical lymphadenopathy during examination and the patient tells you, I don't have any cough or any runny nose. You know, so three of the things you need to be positive, there is fever more than 38 degree, presence of pus on the tonsil and enlarged lymph nodes. But one thing need to be negative, that is no cough or runny nose, because cough or runny nose are usually signs of um, viral infection. So if two are positive, then you need to start the patient on antibiotic treatment. Or for PLEP2, for the purposes of PLEP2, you don't need to go around remembering the name of antibiotics for different conditions except STI. For STI, you need to remember. But with the exception of STI, you can just say that antibiotics according to hospital protocol. Because in NHS, from trust to trust, from hospital to hospital, and from region to region, antibiotic changes. So not even the consultant remember the name of antibiotic for each specific condition, because it would really depend upon the region and the sensitivity of different infections to antibiotics there. So whenever you need to tell uh, about antibiotics to the patient, just tell them, we will give you antibiotics according to the hospital protocol. Okay, so if two of these four are positive, then you give antibiotic to the patient. You will tell the patient that we are going to give you antibiotic according to the hospital protocol. Follow-up should be after one week. So tell the patient that uh, if you don't get better after one week, then please visit us again. And you will need to safety net about swallowing difficulty and breathing difficulty. So tell him that if your condition worsens or you are not able to drink or eat or you are having breathing problem, then please call 999 or come to the emergency department. Okay, so that was all about sore throat um, and tonsillitis. And this was the last video of our ENT series. And if you like this video and other videos, then please give us a thumb up. Uh, thumbs up and also comment on the video because I'm really putting a lot of effort into these videos and I wanted to reach to more people who might need it. Thank you very much and I will see you with uh, the next video soon.